Southern California area um, with regard to, to how social media is used uh, by law enforcement and first responders, and also, um, you know, more importantly, uh, the human side of this, which is, you know, that, that social media being used by law enforcement or by fire departments or by government agencies is not necessarily Big Brother. In a lot of ways, as we saw this week, uh, it can be very helpful. And I think it's partly about an approach. And, you know, I don't want to speak for you, but I know that you've got a quite a following amongst the law enforcement community here uh, in Los Angeles because of the trainings that you're doing. And you're helping departments across the county um, really learn how to use these tools in ways that are helpful and friendly and, and not necessarily Big Brother. So with that, Tom, um, it's my honor to have you speak with us. Thank you, Alan. Well, to be what stands between you and lunch is kind of a hard ticket to, uh, <laughs> to come with. I had a very nice PowerPoint that I had done, and I got in a hurry yesterday and copied over it. So I uh, worked this morning to put some slides together from a, another presentation that we do. I'm very fortunate to teach with uh, one of what I consider to be one of the best guys in this business, and that's Captain Mike Parker from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. We co-teach uh, along with about three or four other uh, officers for the California Peace Officer Standards and Training for California Post. And just in the last year and a half, we've been able to get this message out to a lot of public safety, police, fire, local government agencies here in Southern California and up north. And I titled this one Making a Difference. That's our motto from the Arcadia Police Department. Uh, I, I think that is, it's not necessarily the motto for every law enforcement agency in the U.S., but I think it kind of sums up what we are supposed to be doing. And it, it uh, really works well for us. Common theme for law enforcement, we're there for public safety, enforcement of laws, quality of life, community service. I don't think there's anybody that would disagree that that's what law enforcement should be doing. Today we, we deal with such a changing environment in the world that we have to deal with. I've been a policeman for 28 years now. When I started, I had a wheel gun. Now I carry a semi-automatic. I didn't have a radio to carry on my belt. I turned on the PA in the, in the unit and listened to the broadcast out from the, the car when I was on a traffic stop. Things have changed, and so we have to adapt. And it's no different with social media technology, everything that we do needs to evolve. The problem is, is that law enforcement, government in general, I think, is very slow. We're uh, not only slow to adapt and change, but we're a little resistive. And law enforcement particularly has that label. We talk about Big Brother. We spoke of that before, Alan. We, we talk about the, the want to keep things close to the vest. And so the concept of open government, uh, sharing information. It's even difficult between agencies sometimes. And so that's, that's a hurdle for us. We talk about a need. Uh, some of my bosses in the past, bosses at other agencies, administrators, why do we need this? We've talked about this morning about the, the medium, the, the audience. You determine your medium based on the audience. Well, our community is using social media now. And so we have to be there to respond to them. They're concerned about policy. They're concerned big time about misuse. You can go on to Google, to Bing, look for a photo of a police officer, and I can guarantee you, you'll probably find one in a compromising position or something that we would prefer not be there. So we're, we're looking out for our brand, just like private businesses in a way. Staffing, another big concern. Andrew and I were talking this morning about cutbacks and, and uh, budgets and such. In the short time I've been at Arcadia, we started with 78 sworn. Now we're down to 70. And that's only over the course of the last four or five years because of budgets. As far as staffing a social media presence, who's going to do it? We don't know. In our agency, it's an ancillary duty. I do it assisted by one other uh, patrol sergeant. Yeah, and how do we make that work? I'm going to show you a video in a little bit of one of the only agencies, at least in Southern California, that I'm aware of that is actually dedicating somebody to social media full time. And that's the Sheriff's Department. So we'll take a look at that. I show a slide like this to my administration, they don't understand any of it, <laughs> none of it. If you would have shown that to me five or six years ago, I wouldn't understand it. I started in this uh, in about 2008 um, on behalf of our police association, and it was because we were looking for a way to get our voice into the community other than a letter to the editor. 
and everybody I'm sure at one point in your life has, has tried to write something to a newspaper, be it at a college or a municipality or wherever it may be. And the chances of them listening and putting that out or taking it from you and then twisting it is pretty good. And we had no way to get our message out, so we turned to social media. We started with a blog and a Twitter feed in 2008. I went to our chief at the time, and he was very reluctant, primarily because of, of the unknown. This is, it was very foreign to him. So we went ahead and ran it for a year and a half, two years, got pretty successful, had good feedback from our community, from our council people, and all of a sudden it, it clicked, and my boss said, let's do this on behalf of the agency. So we developed an official presence, and that uh, started off basically with, with our blog, a Facebook, and a Twitter. Since then, we've grown. I'll show you some of our, our platforms in a minute. Some of the reasons we want to be there, and one of the biggest keys to all this is listening. I don't want to tell my community what I think they want to hear. I want them to tell me what they want to hear. And I want to be able to go back and forth and respond to them. Some of the, the points this morning were about being able to answer questions. JPL, talking about how they were able to address questions about the rover via social media. Just some quick examples. The lady on top here is, is a resident in Pasadena, and she wanted to know why the streets were blocked one day um, in the area of Huntington and Baldwin around our mall and things like that. Well, the reason was because we were burying one of our firemen. A fire captain had, had died, uh, and we were conducting a, a pretty significant funeral on his behalf. And when I replied back to her and explained that to her, it went from a, why am I being delayed and why am I being put out here a little bit to, oh my God, I'm sorry I didn't know. And not only was I able to build a relationship there, but I was able to, to get that message out about our tragedy and what had happened within our department, our city. The gentleman below here on Twitter was talking about his misunderstanding of Nixel. So I took that message that he put out about not knowing about Nixel and getting good info and the time of day and stuff, and I replied back to him with links of how he could update his Nixel uh, account so that he wouldn't be bothered in the middle of the night if he didn't want to be. So that became a positive interaction. One of the biggest things that we try and teach in, in the class is, is the importance of listening is what are people saying about you? We have no control over that. I can't even manage that message. I do my best to help dispel rumors, maybe direct a message or misinformation. This was shortly after a shooting up north in, in the city of Richmond where they were getting blasted. I don't know anything about the shooting. I'm not sure if it was a good shooting, a bad shooting, or anything else but there was a hell of a lot of, of chatter in the social space about it. And if Richmond PD wasn't online and listening, they'd never see that, so they wouldn't know how to address it. Benefits. Gets pounded in. All the speakers throughout the day have a little bit of a different take on the benefits of the use of social media. Engagement is huge for us. In engagement is, is a tool that we can build that community and build that base with our community before we need it. I'm not necessarily in the emergency management business, but when we have a major windstorm, big power outage, an earthquake, people are gonna know where to turn in the city of Arcadia and the surrounding area because we already have an established presence. And that's, that is huge for us. We're able to reach out the community, not just locally, but our reach is, is very large. Uh, we were talking earlier about the, I don't quite have the NASA figures, that's for sure, of the eight million and such. But we can get a half a million people, depending on, on the reach. Uh, just a simple Nixle message for us will reach 3,000, and that's just a community message. So we have that built in. Media relations goes without saying. Boston. Boston and Seattle are two examples I'll use. Boston I just added this week, obviously. Seattle had a pretty significant shooting in their downtown area about a year ago. And within 30 minutes, I think, Seattle PD was already up and putting out messages about the incident. They were putting out messages about the incident occurring, the suspect description, where not to go, areas to avoid, and action for their community to take. Had a lot of, uh, they had a lot of interaction with that also from the media. They also put out uh, information about media and, and the uh, press conferences that were coming up. So it's, it's not only to the community, it's also a medium to get to the media. Boston PD. Boston Police, if you followed any of the stream, uh, after this incident last Monday and throughout the week, obviously, they weren't quite as quick to get up on it, but they were up on it within an hour or so of, of the event. And they started confirming information, putting out updates as to where and what was going on, 
and it's a good tool to keep your, your public and community informed. This was just a, a, a reply back talking about what during the windstorms a couple years ago here for uh, our area, telling us that, that we're doing an awesome job. We're a hub of information. They don't have anywhere to turn with the city. Our city, unfortunately, has a, a, an older, clunky website. We're improving it. We, we're getting an update, but it's not the best in, in, in the world right now. And this gives them a medium to go to talk to us that, that they didn't have. Talked about branding, inf uh, influence of opinions, and correcting misinformation, dispelling rumors. So how do we make it work? Well, I discussed the, uh, the APOA. That was our start back in 2008 with a, a blog and a, and, a, and a website. Everything that we do on behalf of our agency, be it a government agency or any type of public safety, or even a business for that matter, you should be linking back and tying everything that you do to an official site, an official website. That way it authenticates what you're doing. It lets people know that you're who you say you are. There's other ways to do it. We're, uh, our account on, on Twitter is, is verified. That too can be replicated though. So you gotta be careful with that. People have done it. This is our blog. This is also LAPD's blog. LAPD was one of the first agencies that had a law enforcement blog. They're very, very restrictive with their comments, but they do have it. We do not uh, restrict comments. We'll allow anything up there. However, we've got to take down policy and, and moderation. We're not gonna allow spam. We're not gonna allow, obviously, hate speech, anything that inflames. But if some somebody wants to tell us that we're not doing a good job, I wanna hear it and I wanna see it. And everybody else should too. And that just, that builds our authenticity within our community. This is our Facebook page. A little over 1,400 followers. If you take a look, one thing I wanna point out here too is another thing that, that we teach to other law enforcement agencies when they're building their presence and engagement. Highlight your people. Let your community see your people. And so everything that we do, we try and, and either get an officer in the photo, we've got the older officers down there, but we try and get that connection so that they see a face behind the patch and the badge. It's not just about the patch and the badge and I'm the cop and I'm here to tell you what to do. I'm a person and I'm here to help you. And that's what we try to do. So we think you're correct, Mr. Chairman. What you just said about, about the, the role of personalizing the, you know, the person behind the badge, how much do you think that kind of psychologically helps the police in Boston? Huge. Uh, Boston not only tweets from their official account, They've got a, a chief PIO who has her own to her feed. Uh, I saw that they had uh, assistant superintendents, the rank structure, superintendents of chief and things like that. Uh, they had them with accounts. Most agencies, you'll see, if you take a look in the Los Angeles area, a lot of the LAPD stations, the LASD stations, their captains have an account and are actively tweeting. Um, it puts a face to, to the presence. And it, my personal feeling is that really builds that community and that bond. Well, we, we don't, you know, th that's the big brother aspect of things, thinking that people, people think that maybe perhaps we're capturing this for other motives and such, and we don't. Um, it, where I think it helps is that if I'm reaching out to just an email address, it's very impersonal. If I'm reaching out to just at Arcadia PD, as opposed to Tom at Arcadia PD, there might be that fear of being not heard or the message might go unanswered. And I think it gives that little bit of a personal bond between the, the reader or the, the, the person receiving, excuse me, the message and us being the senders. So in, in my opinion, it does help. Palm Springs, just another example of another police agency doing a good job. Boise Police Department's not just in California, obviously. You can go anywhere in the US, outside of the US. The UK does a great job with uh, social media and law enforcement. Here's our Twitter page. Uh, we've got about, let's see, 4,400 followers or so, and for a, a small mid-sized agency, that's, that's pretty darn good. I think we were ranked uh, third in the nation for our size agency um, not too long ago. Um, we can reach a lot of people real quick. Yeah, and on that note, this is Nick, so that's the, the platform that we use for instant communications right now. Yeah, I, I get all the, the notifications and everything on my phone to my hip. When we talk about staffing and uh, how do we man this stuff, how do we make it work, there's varying levels of uh, commitment, I'll say. There's also uh, laws that govern 
when I'm supposed to get paid, when I'm not, based on salary and, and hourly wages and such, and sometimes it makes it difficult. My wife uh, keeps on me quite often about being home and doing work, but that's Tom. That's, that's, that's me. I'm going to do it. And so God love her. She's my biggest supporter. She, she uh, puts up with it. My agency, we've kind of got a, a little understanding, so to speak. Um, I don't put in for overtime all the time. There's no need to do it. This is a hobby of mine, and it's become a work-related hobby as well. Nixle, uh, awesome platform. Uh, listening to about Call Fire, others, Code Red throughout the nation. There's others that are great instant communication platforms. We entered, entered into a relationship with Nixel back in uh, the late 2000s, and uh, we've stayed with it ever since. Uh, like I said, we can deliver messages now to your hip based on geographic area. You can do it by zip code, you can do it by city, any specified area. I can get down to a building if I wanted to and go straight up in that building for only that address. We don't use that too often normally. It's a geographic area. They're also coming out now with the ability to hit subscribers to Nixel based on their location at the time. Not the location I defined, but their location. So if somebody from San Francisco is visiting the city of Arcadia for Breeders' Cup at the racetrack, and I put out an emergency message, they'll get that if they're a Nexel subscriber. So it's a pretty cool, cool feature. Nextdoor, if you haven't heard of Nextdoor, it is a growing uh, virtual neighborhood watch, a great program. We can start it, or you as a consumer can start it as a resident. I personally started my own out in my neighborhood in Laverne and created the neighborhood based on a geographic area. You have to have 10 subscribers or 10 people in the program within a month or so of, of starting it to get it to stay valid. We in the city of Arcadia entered into a partnership. Obviously, we're in a constant partnership with the city, but we're doing it as a collaborative effort between the city manager's office and the police department. So we're putting out messages. One nice thing about Nextdoor is you as a community member and a resident can have conversations in amongst yourselves. We never see them. However, we can blast everybody. They can't, but it, it's kind of a neat feature so that people feel that little bit of uh, security and not necessarily talking to government. Does it mention a new species or location? No. Some, some are pay. Most of them are free. Almost everything that we do is open source. Almost everything that we do is, is free. We can't afford it. It's just it's, it's not functional anymore. Nixle is the only oddity for that for us. We're also uh, uh, contracting in the future here real close with a company called Blackboard. Um, for similar communications in a, in a reverse 911 style. Um, Nixel, because of our partnership and our relationship with them over the years, we don't pay. We were under the initial contract of being free for government agencies. They still have a free service, but it's not as robust um, for other s public safety agencies. We started using Vine. Vine and another one that's out is Tout. Vine is a six-second six looped message. Tout, I think, is 15 seconds. I haven't played with that one quite as much. Pinterest. Where are the women in here? How many of the women in here have a Pinterest page? Come on, don't be shy. A few. Okay. Well, Kansas, I got it too, so here we go. Kansas City, Missouri was one of the first police departments to, to jump onto Pinterest. They saw a vision and they ran with it and they did great. They've got a, a, a page, a pin board dedicated just to the women police officers on their agency. I think it's great. But there's such a push recent studies or studies over the last few years talking about uh, perhaps women police officers are, are better suited for a lot of aspects. So where are we going to reach out? Where can I recruit? Where can I help make an impact? Pinterest is one. Vine. Vine is going to have huge, huge good implications, I think, uh, in the emergency management uh, field. Google Plus. Haven't used it quite as much, but we're there. Um, I want to make sure that we have a foothold with our name and, and our presence. Um, my opinion so far is that the Google Plus users aren't quite as mainstream as the Facebook and the Twitter and such. Google Plus seems to be preaching to the choir a lot of the time. I, I'm hooked up with people that I deal with, and I would rather hook up with my community. We have an app. We've got an app for that. Uh, several different app providers out there. We entered into a, a contract. This one is a pay-to-play, but it's, it's very... Uh, good. It's not a, not a high rate at all for us. Um, this links back to the majority of our other platforms. Everything's intertwined. Everything that we do links back and kind of cr cross-pollinates, I like to say. One of the nicest things here, aside from the submit a tip, command an officer, questions and feedback. 
So people have an instant button they can hit and give us feedback about a cop's performance. If they're unhappy about something, if they're happy about something. I didn't like the way you guys handled my call. We get this notification, shoots to an email group, and we can respond to them in a, in a timely and, and uh, good manner. YouTube. We don't have a YouTube channel. Uh, we have a, our name is on YouTube to, to basically collect videos. One of my partners here in, in South Orange County, uh, Newport Beach, does a great job with YouTube. Um, they are way ahead of the game in that. Crime prevention is a, an awesome, awesome uh, arena for the use of YouTube. Look outside law enforcement. This is the message we give to other cops when we're talking to them, cops and firemen. CERT organizations, cities, city of Monrovia right next to us. Passing and Humane, I love this one. These, they, they rotate their photos on top, but they had a, a squirrel on their logo for a while that I had on, on here. It was uh, great. But look to these other organizations because don't reinvent the wheel. If somebody else is doing a good job, take it and run with it. You want my stuff? Take it and run with it. The, the more the merrier. I, I throw this slide in here. We use this more of an officer safety uh, uh, teaching point when we're, we're doing the class. We are everywhere. And as far as the police officer's perspective, I've always been taught I don't want anybody to know where I live. I don't want anybody to know my uh, identifying info. I've got a post office box I've had for 35 years. You know, I, I try and keep my personal information private. And that's a good thing if you look at it straight from the officer safety standpoint. And nowadays, we talked about cameras being everywhere. Our information is not that secure. If somebody wants to find Tom Levesque, they're going to go online, pay 10 bucks, and get my records in about 30 minutes. It's not that hard. They can do an open search source search and probably find me without paying a dime. So I have to constantly go on and vet my information, opt out, and do all that good homework. And that's what we're, we're teaching our, our cops. But putting photos on your own personal stuff. This one happens to be one of my uh, SWAT guys. He's an inner perimeter officer. He's got that on his Facebook page for everybody to see. So now everybody that didn't know he was a cop, friends he hasn't seen in 30 years, now they know he's a cop. Piper, motor officers, this guy and his kid with photo recognition and everything else nowadays or, or geotagging on photos. Who's to say that photo wasn't taken by a, a relative, doesn't have their, their geo turned off on their phone and, and their settings. You know, now they know where he lives potentially or a relative. A lot of danger behind it. Forums, same type of thing. We, get, we, law enforcement, public safety, government, we have to be careful with what we put out there. How do we get it out? We go to meetings, we go to the schools, we put out flyers, we talk to people, we've got little business cards with our stuff on it. Every business card we have now has the www.arcadiapd.org. We've got a banner, $1,000, spent $1,000 to put a banner up that we rotate throughout the city. Bumper stickers on our police cars. We stole that one from Portland Police Department. They were one of the first to do it. Get your message out. People have to know where they, they can turn. Not monitored 24-7, go back to the staffing issues. That's a message that we constantly try and put out, although I do get notifications. I can't guarantee that I'm going to see that next week if I'm on vacation at Vail Lake and I'm not getting any service down in, in Temecula or something. You know, so we try and push that. I talked about the LA County Sheriffs. Uh, this is a good time. Can you, do you need to play or should I play it on here? Okay. Show you a quick little video here. I'm not going to have audio. Hang on. I am not a technologically uh, astute person here. The microphone? Your computer. Oh, okay. Right now. If you want to kind of play it for me. Now, do, now do all sorts of stuff about you. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's all good. Oh, well. Well, I had it here, and now I lost lost it. So. Is it in your PowerPoint? Is it still open there? I don't think it'll play, though, will it? Maybe not, but it might pop up again. I took it out. Okay, okay I apologize. <laughs> we'll talk real quick about LASD and their ECOM unit. LASD does a great job. They've got a headquarters media unit that's staffed by deputies, a sergeant, a lieutenant, obviously Captain Parker. Um, and they respond to media inquiries and, and do their press conferences, the normal stuff that we do every day. But they've also committed social media dispatchers, civilian personnel, to their unit. 
They have five. So they are the first agency in Southern California that I know of that is actually monitoring social media 24-7. No, no. Good. Not yet. Not yet. They, they are monitoring it for officer safety, for investigative purposes, for illegal activity. They are not yet ready to take calls for service via social media. None of us are at that stage. We are quickly approaching a stage where our 911 will be capable of accepting texts, photos, possibly short videos, but we're not there yet. This, this, to me, their e-comm unit is, is the first step toward that, at least in our region out here. You know, I know there's other uh, centers that perhaps have a, a more robust system and, and are dedicated to it, but we out here are not ready for that. I've got a note in here we've talked about earlier about open source and, and that type of thing. None of, this, none of this replaces boots on the ground and replaces the, the functions that we're supposed to be doing as law enforcement officers, public safety folks. We still have to go out. When we're doing, yeah. Are, are you um, back at Mission A with Brian? With we are. We have not been victim to it. Um, now that I've said that, somebody will, will probably remote in from Florida and, you know, do it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword for law enforcement. Swatting. Basically, swatting, my understanding of swatting is that when someone is able to replicate a 911 message, and misrepresent the location and forward that, call that, get that into a 911 center. And what that does is it prompts the agency into taking action. And if somebody calls up and says, I'm hiding in my closet and there's a guy with a gun outside, we're going to send the troops, you know, whatever it may be. Somebody just broke into my house and they're rummaging through the house. We're going to send everybody that we got. And if it comes to the point that they indicate that there's a barricade, a hostage, things like that, this term swatting came because some larger metropolitan agencies out this way perhaps sent a SWAT team at one point, and that became the term. Targets were personalities and, and celebrities in the industry. Yes, ma'am. Very much so, and and it's a it's a it's a difficult rock to, to deal with. Um, if we, we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. If we don't respond and take care of business, and something God forbid something were to happen and be a legit call, then what happens? If it's not a legit call and, and we still go, then we have mud on our face potentially. You know, it, it's just it's it's a balance that we have to reach. I know some of the larger agencies here have taken the stance we're not going to talk about it. I don't know if the lack of publicity will help or not, but that's one, one way of, of, of dealing with it. Again, most of the stuff, we're talking about uh, everything for the most part being free or low cost. Investigative wise, yes, we still use departmental resources. We still use our accurates, our TLOs, our databases that are available only to law enforcement. One of my investigators called a, a gentleman regarding a credit card fraud. Uh, he lived, I think, in Illinois, and he was talking to him. And the gentleman wanted to, to, he was vetting my officer and wanted to know if, if it was true that who you are, who you are, who you say you are. And my officer was giving him, here's your last four of your social. Here's your address. Is your phone number still this? Is your wife's name X, Y, Z? And the guy was astounded that we had all that information at our fingertips. And when we're doing it for the right reasons and we're conducting an investigation, yes, we have a lot of resources available to us that are not for public use. Mapping. Mapping is huge. I don't know if, if uh, we'll see that today. Uh, I, I think we might with mapping. Um, and, and no? Hurricane Sand? No. Oh, okay. It's not my specialty. Uh, another partner of mine at LA County Sheriff's, he's great at, at map using, or using maps and, and the geo information that's available to us uh, in, in the uh, social stream. This is just an example of us being able to, to uh, nail down into an area around our racetrack. Uh, this is not during a meet. This is this is just uh, any average day around the San Diego racetrack, and I people don't have their their geo turned off. 
we're able to, to dial right in on their 20 Twitter messages and see what they're talking about. So we utilize that quite extensively when Breeders' Cup uh, in town. Um, we are a soft target, Homeland Security, all that good stuff. So when we have major events at our track uh, and, and an influx of people, we will man, I will man the command post and be uh, monitoring and usu using a lot of these social tools on behalf of the agency. So what kind of tools do we use? Again, goes back to open source, Hootsuite, TweetDeck. You know, that's an example of TweetDeck right there. Google Alerts, can't say enough about Google Alerts and monitoring what's being said about yourself, RSS feeds, things like that. I want to know if somebody says or tweets out or messages on Facebook, Arcadia Pig. I want to know if somebody says something about Tom Levesque or Sergeant Levesque or Arcadia Police Department. And so I've got all that stuff coming in. I don't get to see it all. I don't see it all the time every day but at least it gives me the opportunity to vet some information that's out there and perhaps be ahead of the game. We had an applicant about a month ago that posted a tweet, uh, how, how excited he was to be going on a ride along with our agency uh, the following Tuesday. Oh, cool, this kid's coming to, uh, to work with me, I wanna see who it is. Pull up his profile, profile photo's okay. I start going through his tweets and his stream. He's got pictures of people blowing on a hookah and doing all kinds of stuff and talking about weed and whatever. <laughs> Yeah, that's all good, but keep it to yourself, dude. Don't put it out there. And I don't want you working with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I took that information, and I gave it to our personnel department. And needless to say, that gentleman is not, not uh, an applicant with us any longer. So moving on to other resources. IACP, if you haven't heard of it, International Association Chiefs of Police. I would invite you all from your agencies, wherever you may be, from private businesses, take a look at this website. A lot of resources, a lot of uh, policy information, best practice, a lot of who to turn to and contact information. They've also got how-to videos for something as simple as setting up your, your privacy settings on Facebook. Some of it might get outdated because again, these platforms change so often we have a hard time keeping up with it. Connected Cops, if you're at all interested in law enforcement social media, the lady, she's a friend of mine that I work with and have, have taught for, she runs the Smile Conference series. Her name is uh, Lori Stevens. Her Twitter handle is at LawsCom, L-A-W-S-C-O-M, -M. I have to look it up. Uh, everything populates for me nowadays, so I, I, I lose my typing and spelling skills. Anyway, her website that she runs through Laws Communication and such is connectedcops.net. Again, it's, it's uh, in a way almost like a Wikipedia for cops. She allows us to post uh, information on there and update things. It's got tools, policy, tips, safety, you name it. Another good resource for, especially for law enforcement or other government. COPS 2.0, another similar website. Um, it was, it did have a lot of Canadian-centric information. Now it's moving back to more mainstream North America. GovLoop, got to give a shout out to my GovLoop yeah. friends. Yeah. I, oh, I do have it. I got the little sticker. Yeah. See? Yeah. I tell you, the folks at GovLoop, I've, I've stolen a lot of information and a lot of discussions and things off of the website there. I love it. Just another place to turn to get information. Knock the cops in the head that I teach. Quit looking just at cop sites. Look outside. Look at other agencies. Look at, at other businesses and such. California Post, we talked about Peace Officer Standards and Training. They're the guiding light for all law enforcement training in California. I was fortunate enough to sit and help develop a uh, two-hour training video with a panel of, I think there was 14 or 15 of us on that. It's now a two-hour training video available to other public safety throughout the state free of charge through post. Now, I, I don't remember the exact title, but if you were to call them or query social media, you'd be able to find it, californiapost.gov. That's my info. If anyone needs to reach out to me, feel free. Thanks. <laughs>